hello 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 and welcome back to my channel today i want to talk about empathy or lack of empathy um excuse me i'm in my car right now i'm on my way to the store and this subject popped in my head and i was just thinking about some scenarios i wanted to share with you guys um just while it was on my mind so a little dusty but <laughs> here we go um let's talk about narcissists and how they actually have an inability to feel empathy so one way you can think about this is think about someone who's had a spinal cord injury so with the spinal cord injury let's say you're paralyzed from the waist down so if someone was to like take a needle and stab you in the leg you won't be able to feel it right or um take something hot and you know take a match and take it to the bottom of your foot you're not going to be able to feel it right your sensation is gone because you've had that that spinal cord injury you've had something severed in your spine so you, you are detached from the sensation of feelings in your leg like a normal and uninjured I'm not gonna say normal because they're still normal people but an uninjured person you feel right well it's the same thing with the narcissist they're detached from empathy and it's really hard for someone that is very much in touch with empathy such as an empath which is usually the type of person that attracts narcissists <laughs> Um, it's so crazy because narcissists and empaths are drawn together like magnets. So it's really hard for anyone that's probably watching this video to even comprehend the concept of a person not having empathy. But that's how it is for narcissists. They have that spinal cord injury, basically. <laughs> they have a de they are detached from empathy, right? So basically, what happens is they end up maybe studying how empathy should look by looking at movies or looking at commercials or studying people's facial expressions or studying other people's reactions to certain situations so they can kind of drum up empathy or manufacture what they think empathy should look like whenever they're in a situation like say someone's family member died they know they should have a reaction to that but they can't feel the pain that person is feeling they don't know how to put themselves in that person's shoes so they have to manufacture some sort of empathy based on something they saw on tv or based on what they see other people doing so you you do end up feeling that that's not genuine and you can't really understand why well that's why because they're not in touch with empathy they don't they don't know how to feel empathy that's why a, 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 per, a sociopath or a psychopath can go around killing people can hurt animals and so forth because they don't know how to feel other people's pain so there's nothing that's stopping them from hurting another another being um because they can't put themselves in another person's shoes where the person with empathy can stop themselves and say oh my gosh that would hurt if i did if someone did that to me i can't do that to a, a cat or a dog or i can't do that to another god forbid another human um a person without empathy doesn't have that thing stopping them from doing that I'm not saying all narcissists are psychopaths but i'm just saying they're lacking empathy so could explain some of their behavior right okay so i'm going to give you an example <laughs> a really interesting example something that happened to me when i was dating very briefly the federal police officer okay so i have problems with um i have some digestive problems and a lot of that comes from when you uh, you know i'm a survivor of childhood trauma when you are a survivor of childhood trauma you do end up having some health issues as an adult um actually if you know anything about aces you, you can see how childhood trauma connects to problems health issues as adults um i have a video about trauma if you want to scroll through it and kind of listen to that anyway so i do have some digestive issues um every now and then they it might act up 
Now I pretty much have it control and under control with my diet, which like I said in my last video is I uh, most 90% of the time consume a vegan diet. I'd say less than 10% of the time pescatarian. For the most part, I'm, I'm vegan now. So that helps a lot. But even so, for some reason, when this person was coming to town, I was having a hard time. And it was pretty much out of character because it's not something I suffer from consistently. It just happened to be triggered while he was here that weekend. Um, it was probably it was probably my intuition. Now that I look back on it, um, because I'm very I'm very empathic. I'm very sensitive, highly sensitive person, and I probably could pick up on that something ain't right, <laughs> and that nervousness was at making my system act up. Now that I look back on it, but at the time I didn't know why I was having these digestive issues, right? So neither here nor there. Um, I was doing everything in my power to get it under control because he was only going to be here for a couple days. So I was like popping gas X like crazy. And I was like, why can't I get this under control? So I, um, we were going to go downtown and do some walking around, but it was very uncomfortable for me because I was in a very, very uncomfortable state. I was not doing well at all. I needed to go to a pharmacy and find something stronger. So, and I could tell that he really just couldn't get it. Like he couldn't feel my pain. I could tell he was disconnected from the fact that I was in severe pain and I was just forcing myself to push through it because this person traveled to be here. But they, I could tell that they just weren't connected to the fact that I was uh, very uncomfortable, you know, very uncomfortable. Um, and so, anyway, we, long story, long, long, long story short, we went to the pharmacy, and he's, <laughs> so, what kind of um, medication do you get for that? We're in the, the aisle with all of the medications for stomach discomfort. <laughs> And I'm like, well, I'm um, just looking at the different options and, well, do you get this? Do you normally get this? And he was just so matter of fact and so unfeeling, you know, un, you could tell he was forcing concern. You could tell he was just there, but he didn't want to be there. And he was just trying to make me pick something. And he was trying to act like he was engaged with the process of making me feel better, but he he didn't really care that's it was very bizarre you know but that's the feeling I was getting but I was like well I mean what I normally get is not working because I already have that I'm just kind of looking through these different things and I'm trying to you know read the labels and see what's going to help me push through the rest of the day you know hmm you know and then then he starts wandering around the aisles like a little kid like totally disinterested in what's going on and I just picked something up just to get out of the store. And I'm um, hoping that it would work. So I get to the front of the line and he's standing there and he's looking around. He was like, so what'd you get? And I showed him. He was like, hmm. He said, see, they say that police officers don't have empathy, but we have empathy. That's how he said it. I was like, yeah, you do. You really have empathy. And I was thinking to myself, A, someone must have told you you don't show empathy in the past for you to even say that. B, you're not here in this moment with me as a police officer. <laughs> you are dating me. So why would you even say that? And C, this is not empathy. Going to the store with me on our way downtown is not empathy. That's not empathy. You might think, based on your studies of empathy, that that's the way you show empathy. But this is not empathy. Just so we're clear. But in his mind, he was showing empathy at that moment. So we went to the parking lot. I took the medicine. And for some reason, I just could not get out of that <laughs> discomfort for the rest of the day. And that was pretty much the last weekend that I saw this person. 
I think they probably weren't too comfortable with the fact that, you know, I had this episode, um, that I wasn't like operating at optimal efficiency like a robot. Because he was very robotic and very like a smooth running machine. Kind of almost remind me of the Terminator. <laughs> it was a weird, a weird specimen. Um, and there's other factors that played into every to the dismantling of this situation. But that was a very bizarre. I could tell there was a, a huge disconnect. A huge disconnect. Um, and I could tell, you know, that I was dealing with a narcissist. That, that wasn't the only reason why I could tell that, but I could tell I was dealing with a narcissist. That was a huge clue. This person does not have empathy. That's not empathy. <laughs> so a narcissist is just incapable. You can't teach them empathy. You know, there's something, there's a broken wire. There's a broken circuit in there, right? Like, <laughs> just imagine you have a bunch of wires in your brain and someone went in there and just cut that cord and there's no putting it back together it's it's done like it's disconnected they are disconnected from empathy you can't teach it to them you can't plug it back in you can't mold it back together you can't weld it back together it's it's just not there and you can tell when a person's manufacturing empathy so that's one big red flag when you're dealing with a narcissist that I wanted to put out there while it was on my mind today. I'm sitting in the parking lot getting ready to go to the store watching cars drive by. But um, anyway, I just wanted to say that. I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. And I'll pop back in next time with another tip, another trick, another video to tell you how to identify if you might be dealing with a narcissist. Stay tuned. Have a good one. See you next time. Bye.